think International Institute of Cosmetology is great. There's so much camaraderie here. There's a lot of love and there's a lot of strength and power in getting their graduates out there into the world and feeling supportive with all the tools that they need to have a wonderful career in cosmetology. And from what I've seen here coming a couple of times, witnessing all the people, how much fun they're having, what a great atmosphere um, is being created for them as well and a support system, not just with the people they've gone through this, the course with, but from the instructors and the people that own this great academy, there's a lot of love and structure here, which is what anyone needs going into their career. So I think it's a great place to start. Thank you so much for having me. Um, I was here, what, two years ago? Time flies when you're having a good time. So thank you for having me back. I truly appreciate it. Um, one of the most profound things that struck me when I was sitting here is that as Sonia was talking about earlier, and I think was made reference from Carmelo, when Sonia and I went to training because we didn't go to school here in America, it was very, very different. So it took me four years to become a hairdresser. And I finished my training and it was just like, yeah, here's your diploma, see you later, alligator. Off you go. There was no celebration, there was no one patting you on the back, there was no families enjoying a great lunch or doing anything like that. And the interesting thing is that no other beauty school that I know of does this either. There's no other beauty school out there that is celebrating what people have just gone through and the journey they've just gone through and celebrating the fact that they've just gone through this whole process to start their careers, change their careers, and move their life in a different direction. So kudos to you guys for doing that. I think it's incredibly special and a great way to celebrate um, the passion that everyone has, and to all the teachers as well, it's truly amazing. So some of you are probably sitting out there and you're not hairdressers, and I travel all over the world. I've been a hairdresser since I was 14 years old, and I just turned 50. So you can do the math, it's a very long time that I've been a hairdresser. Um, I don't know how to do anything else except be a hairdresser. And... I fell in love um, with hairdressing, and I, you may have heard this story before, so excuse me. But I fell in love with hairdressing. Um, every week I would go to the salon with my mum. And it was back in the day when you had a wash and blow dry or wash and set every week. And I would sit there and watch women come into the salon. And I was a misfit. I was the kid that was um, obesely overweight. I didn't quite fit in. I wasn't regular like the other kids that I went to school with. I didn't have a lot of friends. I was picked on all the time. They'd call me Orca and Porky Pig and all of those fun names that little girls do to each other. Um, they're eating crow right now, but that's good. Um, <laughs> and uh, that's all right. Karma gets you in the end. She always gets you. And the thing that... Um, was profound for me as this little girl that didn't quite fit in anywhere and was trying to find her own way and struggling with her identity, is when I'd go to the salon with my mother, I would just sit there and watch. And I would see women walk into the salon in a certain way. And typically they'd walk in with their head down, shoulders hunched, not feeling particularly good about themselves. And during the course of that appointment, I would see a transformation happen. I would see them not only come out of their shell, I would see them at some point look in the mirror and there's this twinkle that happens in a woman's eye when she feels really good about herself. And even if it's just for a second, it means a lot that second that she looks at herself and thinks, I look good, I look cute, I look beautiful, I look sexy, I fit in, I feel really good about myself. And as an observer, I would watch that happen week after week, month after month, year after year. And those women would get out of the chair, their shoulders would go back a little, they'd have a little bit of a wiggle in their step as they walked out of the salon, a little smile on their face, and that was all because of a hairdresser. And that was incredibly profound for me. And I made the decision very early, obviously, because I started when I was 14, that I felt like hairdressers were rock stars. There were no rules for them. My mother's hairdresser, his name was Ian Halfpenny, and Ian would go to the salon, 
this was a very long time ago in Australia, so now it's kind of cool and normal. Then it wasn't. Ian would wear makeup and eyeliner, and he'd wear kilts and boots, and all of these things were, were quite unusual. And he was made fun of a lot because of the time. And he didn't care because he was really being himself. And all he cared about was making his clients feel good about themselves and to find their true beauty. And it really was such a defining moment, and that was the reason why I became a hairdresser because I truly believe that we're rock stars and we change everyone's life. And I know some of you are probably sitting out there, and the part of my speech that changed is because as I was enjoying the celebration and watching all the work, and I've been here for hours, so I've been back there and seen everyone work on their models and talking to each other and how excited they all are. And as I heard Carmelo talk about support your loved one, support your son or daughter or sister or wife or whoever he or she is that has gone through this process to change their career, it struck me because if this wasn't the hairdressing industry, we would not ask any of you to support us. If we were doctors or lawyers or accountants or nurses or pick your poison, we would not be standing here saying, support us because we're hairdressers, believe in the choice that we've made to make this career. And that, to me, is a sin. Because every single one of you in this room that are old enough, and the young ones will experience it sometime very soon, have had a really good haircut and a really bad one. And you will know the difference. You will know the difference what it feels like to sit with a hairdresser that makes you feel really good about yourself, that you trust, that you feel comfortable with, that listens to whatever you want to unload on them and make you feel good and look good at the end of that process. And that is because of a hairdresser. Every magazine you open and look at an advertorial, a photo shoot, a commercial for Target, for Maybelline, for anything out there, the reason those models look so good is because of a hairdresser and a makeup artist. That's why they look so good. So as beauty professionals, we change the world. We make the world look beautiful, and more importantly, we make people feel beautiful. So this profession is actually very noble. It's something that if you apply yourself to it, like any other profession out there, you can make a lot of money. You can be really successful, and you can write your own ticket. Because let me tell you, that fat little girl from Australia that didn't quite fit in and didn't really know what she was going to do with her life, except be a hairdresser because she wanted to be a rock star, had no idea that she was going to grow up, move to London, work for one of the biggest names in the industry, move to America, start her life all over again, write two books that were on the bestsellers list, have a TV show that's been on TV and had millions of people watch every week for 10 years, and be standing on this stage addressing all of you. She had no idea. All I wanted... Thank you. All I wanted to do was to make people feel good about themselves. And the amazing thing with this industry is, as you heard from Sonia, and as you'll hear from me, and as I'm sure many of you heard many times before, I love my job. Absolutely love it. I live for my job. I still do hair. I still love to play with hair. I still get jazzed about doing clients. I could talk about hair color until the cows come home. It turns me on, it lights me up, and it makes me happy. And I probably hazard that 75% of this room are going to hate waking up tomorrow morning and going to do their job because they're not hairdressers. So if any of you were wondering slightly 
if this profession can sustain someone and if they can make a lot of money and if they can do whatever they need to do to be really successful and push themselves forward, I am standing here in the flesh to tell you, yes, they can. The only limit in this industry is the limit that you put on yourself. Hairdressers truly do, in so many ways, infiltrate every single thing that we do. We have so much power, not just within the beauty industry, but the way that we deliver things, the way we make people feel, and the other aspects of our career that are open to us, whether it's standing behind a chair, whether it's working for a manufacturer, whether it's teaching other hairdressers and passing on our knowledge, whether it's having a TV show, whether it's writing a book, whether it's doing celebrities, whether it's being an editorial stylist, the list is truly endless. And the amazing thing is that everything that I have in my life and all the things that I truly enjoy and the different avenues that have opened up to me have all opened up to me because I'm a hairdresser. That's all just come because I was lucky enough at a really young age to find a profession that I truly adore and that has never, ever let me down. And that every morning when I wake up, I want to be better than I was yesterday. Every client inspires me to be a better version of myself for the next client that I was for the last one. That's the push that comes when you truly have passion and you're really lucky enough to find something that you love. To all the people out there that have just graduated, don't think it's going to be easy because it's not, but nothing worth having is easy. When you truly, truly love it, then you have to work hard, you have to apply yourself, you have to push yourself, and you have to dig deep to be able to make the change that you want to see in the world and make the change that you want people to feel. The thing that um, is amazing about being here and watching this celebration and watching people actually celebrate the hard work that everyone has put into their career is that sense of pride. I have it when I walk in here. I feel proud to be a hairdresser. I feel proud to look at these young kids back there, and I don't mean young, I'm not being rude, but I feel like I'm old as dirt at the moment. So um, you're young in the industry, but watching all this young enthusiasm come out and realize that, you know what, our industry's in good hands. We're going to pass it forward and we're going to pave the way. Technology is changing. The way consumers are consuming our products and our skills are changing as well. The world is getting smaller. And because of, or, of all of those things, it actually opens up the depth and the breadth that we can touch and where we can take our skill set. And that is something that is very different to a lot of other careers out there because you don't find many people, there are some, but you don't find many professions, as Sonia said, that today she flew in or two days ago she flew in from London, tomorrow she's going to be on the way to LA, I just got back from Paris, two weeks from now I'm going to be in Italy, then I'm going to Australia, and that's all because I'm doing it for work. But there's a little bit of fun mixed in as well, so don't feel sorry for me because it's pretty good, it's okay. So, so, the thing that I will say is support the people that have just graduated. Realize that whoever that person is, in your family, your friend, support them, be their client. Go and get your hair done with them. Recommend that all your friends go. They need to build a clientele. They're learning. It's also much easier sometimes when you have people that you know and you feel a little bit more comfortable with to be able to interact and build that clientele. So support them because now they're a business and they need you, your support. They need you to go and get your hair done, get your color done, tell your friends to do the same thing and know I just want to give you a little heads up to everyone, all the family members and the friends and all the future professionals out there that have just graduated. It's not going to be for free. It's not going to be in the kitchen. It's not going to be 10 o'clock at night after they've worked their bum off all day and they're exhausted. You're going to pay to get your hair done. You're going to respect the time that they've put into this profession. They're not going to get up early for you. They're not going to stay up late for you. You are going to protect them like and 
look after them and respect them like any other profession. Because let me tell you, you're not calling your doctor up at 10 o'clock and going, oh, little stuffy, little stuffy, can you help me out? No, that's not going to happen. So make sure you respect them and support them because they're going to need it. And to everyone that's just come into the industry, this truly is the most amazing profession in the world. It really is. Just grab it by both hands and a really open heart. And as long as you do it honestly, authentically, and with love and passion, just ride the wave because it will take you many, many, many places that you never expected and they will all be miraculous and wonderful. So I think you have some questions for me, right? How would you deal with the outside negativity that comes along with some people thinking this isn't a real career path or that it's taking the easy way out rather than getting a traditional college degree? Oh, well, I just address that. I just tell them to shut up. <laughs> Sorry. I mean... <laughs> You know, I really, um, I'll just tell a really quick story, if I may. The other day, I was sitting at Newark Airport, because I live in New Jersey. So I was at Newark Airport, I was in the bar, as one does when they're waiting for a flight, and there was this really obnoxious man sitting beside me. And he was super loud and really annoys uh, annoying, and in New Jersey, we have a word for him. It's something bad, but I'm not going to say it, because there are kids here, but you all know what it is. He was that to a T. And he kept talking about, I just got back from Italy and I'm in Italy and I tried a case in Italy and no one cared. Everyone was like turning the other way and going, dude, just please be quiet. We just can't even take it anymore. And of course, I was sitting next to him and he went, what do you do? <laughs> I know, right? Like just the wrong girl to do that to. <laughs> like seriously. And I said to him, I'm a hairdresser. And he looked at me with this look of utter disgust and disdain on his face, and he went, oh, you can't just be a hairdresser. As God would have it, <laughs> again, karma, as God would have it, miraculously, someone went, oh, Tabitha, across the United Club. And I was like, thank you, God. Perfect timing. Come on over here. I'll give you anything you want. <laughs> the funny thing was, it wasn't a fan, which would have been amazing, because that still would have been super cool and really good timing. It was actually a client that came running over that I haven't seen for a really long time, had moved away, was in New Jersey visiting family, and just raved about her hair, how much she loved her hair, how she, much she loved the experience in my salon, how she's never found anyone like me to do her hair. And he just looked at me like, shit, no one wanted to listen to my Italian law story, but you, you're a rock star. So that's what I would say to people that negate our industry. <laughs> Next question. Do you advise stylists to choose a specialty right away? That's a great question. Um, I don't actually advise people to choose a specialty straight away. You know, part of, part of the way that I was trained um, was everything, right? So it was all-encompassing and you learn a little bit of everything. And I like that and I always encourage my young staff that are coming in to do everything until they find their sweet spot. Some of us are more attracted to cutting hair, some of us are more attracted to doing colour, but if you force it on someone, then it takes away from being well-rounded. To me, the best thing you can do in this industry is to be well-rounded. Even if you choose to specialise in one specific area and make that your niche, that's a really great thing. But you should know the other areas because every aspect of this industry complement each other. So if you're a great colourist, you 
need to understand the geometry behind hair cutting and what shapes are and how hair is going to lay to make sure colour complements that. If you style hair, you need to know what the foundation of your hair cut is. So it all goes hand in hand, and until you specialise in something and find your sweet spot, I think it's good to just look at the whole pie and then decide what your piece is and then just go and devour it. So thank you very much. Thank you, um, Marcello, for having me back again. I appreciate it. I appreciate that you put up with me again for another year. It was lovely to come here. And honestly, thank you, everyone. And congratulations. Congratulations on graduating. Congratulations coming into this amazing profession. And again, thank you for having me here.